Bugs are extremely nutritious, and as we said in our ASAP Science episode, should we all be eating insects, they may be the high protein, high fiber, low fat superfood us humans have always been looking for. So we challenged ourselves to see how many ways we can incorporate insects into our diet. Good thing Mitch and I are hungry, because we're going to be eating a lot of bugs today. Yeah, so a lot of people actually think of live insects when they picture eating worms or incorporating into their diet, like these mealworms we had, but that's not always the case, so we really wanted to show you what different varieties of insects you can eat, what you can do with them, how you can cook with them, and we will be experimenting on ourselves to see how these things taste. Do you want to try and take one out? Yeah, also, I think I am don't like bugs, <laughs> so I don't really want to touch that. Uh, oh. I want to try so bad every time I looked at these. They freak out. That's their whole life's crashing in front of their eyes. Like they don't. No, no. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways, what we did is we took these mealworms and we carefully took them out and put them into a Tupperware container. Also known as using a 10 foot pole to touch them. Yeah. <laughs> or a fork. We put them into a Tupperware container. We then dumped the Tupperware container full of mealworms into boiling water. This is where the insects died. Then we strained out the water, had these insects, put them into a tray where we added some salt and pepper, spiced them up. This is where our cooking skills came into play. We put so much oil on it to try and make <laughs> sure they tasted good. And then we put them into the oven at 350. Don't know why, we just kind of made it up. Yeah, never. But we also had a box of crickets that we had frozen overnight, took them out, opened it up, spooned them out into the same tray, seasoned them the same way, and roasted them along with the mealworms. What we end up with is this lovely <laughs> feast of insects. It's a perfect appetizing platter that you can serve at any fancy um, get together you have with your family and friends. Yeah, look out, summer barbecue, you're gonna blow them away. It's, it's strange how, like, even though you know mentally and, like, logically that it's actually. Perfectly fine to eat, it's no different than eating like a chunk of a cow or anything else really. Um, it still kind of like grosses me out. Well, let's just do it. Cheers. Are you put the whole thing in your mouth? Yeah. Like all at once. What are you going to do? Bite its head off? I don't know. Cheers. Wait, wait, wait I'm actually scared. <laughs> wait, I need to think about it. I actually have to prep myself. Okay, cheers. Mm. Mm. Wait, well, whatever we flavored it with didn't work. Mm. Mm. <laughs> it does kind of taste like, it, li it does taste like fish. It tastes like shrimp, is what I'm gonna say. No, okay, the inside of it is it kind of like, like wet and wet. weird. Yeah, like, like when you fully cook it. <laughs> its head is mouth. lodged in the side of my throat. Same. Its head is right here. Same. Like it's, so it doesn't necessarily taste that great, but it definitely doesn't taste like very much. I think it's very much something you could easily, if you were a good chef, unlike us, we're not very good at cooking, you could spruce this up and make it taste amazing. Insects like mealworms and crickets can actually eat agricultural waste. So it kind of makes sense that you could have these insect farms next to farms that already exist. And these insects could actually eat the waste from the farm. We should try one of the crickets that's okay. cooked the same way. These are roasted crickets. Oil, salt, pepper, go. Mm. Mm. Those are better. That's way better. Oh my god, that's good. Kind of like eating popcorn. Like it's a good alternative I'll eat to just like munching on that. But if you don't want to eat, you know, bugs that you can see, I don't think many people want to just eat bugs like popcorn or chips, what other options do we have? One thing that you can do is make yourself a trusty dip. So these are some dehydrated mealworms. And what we're actually just gonna do is add these to our dip. This is actually a really convenient way to make your generally unhealthy dip into something more healthy with, you know, a lot of minerals, a lot of vitamins, a good amount of protein. You just stick it in there and you can feel a little bit better about binging with uh, chips and dip. We're gonna add three quarters of a cup of these dehydrated mealworms. Shlabam! Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> No one, if you had a party, no one would know what these were. You could be like, oh, it's little bits of cabbage. Chill. Past the point of insect eyes staring at you as you eat them. So that's a good, a good step forward. Cheers. Cheers. Good. This is really crunchy. Really good. If we were having people over, I would just put this out and not happens. say anything and just have people eat it, and then at the end be like, BAM, you just ate mealworms! So interestingly, of the 1.4 million described animals, over a million of them are actually insects. And of those, only 5,000 are dangerous to humans, animals, and crops. We're also, as humans, not as closely related to insects as we are to livestock. So insects are less likely to carry certain diseases, so there would be less fear of things like bird flu. 
There's tons of options in terms of just mixing these guys on top of or into something. So if we were to start eating these little critters on a regular basis, it wouldn't be the first time that us humans have used insects to our advantage. Bees make 1.2 tons of commercial honey every year, while we also use silkworms to produce the beautiful, amazing silk shirts that we all own. I don't have a silk shirt. Me either. The point we're trying to make is that insects are used to benefit humans, to make clothes, to make honey, to heal wounds in hospitals, but now they could be even used to provide nutrients for our bodies. So usually if you found a, an insect in your salad at a restaurant, you would complain, which brings up an interesting point. What is the difference between an insect on the floor running around a restaurant or that's still in a leaf that came from the grocery store versus insects that are purposely put into salads or other recipes? Because it is one thing to pull an insect off a dirty floor when you don't know where it comes from versus farming them. Many restaurants don't want to experiment with this because they think people won't like it. But as society shifts and as people start to socially accept bugs in their food, that's when we're gonna to start to be able to eat them more and that's when we could change the world for the positive. Bon appetit? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it just tastes like I just want. <laughs> uh, cricket crouton. Cricket crouton. Wait, is that a thing? Should we do that right now? Mmm, <laughs> it's just fun. Okay, so this is one thing that we're pretty excited about. These are called chocolate chirp cookies. <laughs> oh! These are actually made with um, cricket flour and cricket powder. This is actually flour. It can replace normal and rich flour that you use to bake. Which I think is like the coolest aspect because now you don't have to look at the bug and it's just literally part of the food now. Okay. Mm. That was so good. Mm. And some milk. I know. So although some of this stuff may actually seem a little off-putting to you at first, it's interesting to think about something like sushi, which had the same sort of barriers, um, eating raw fish in general to the Western world. It took a while for that food to sort of permeate our culture. Seeing these types of foods, um, you know, being marketed and packaged in different ways to appeal to people is hopefully something, you know, that can not only change the future of cuisine, but also the future of the world and, and what types of foods we're mass producing around the world. It's great to know that people are trying to figure out ways that we can get people interested in eating insects because it, insects can be farmed in such small areas. They require so little water and so little maintenance and they reproduce so quickly. There's issues with hunger. Insects can become a great staple for actually trying to obliterate the issue that is starvation around the world. So ultimately, we understand that it might be hard to contextualize and wrap your head around eating insects, but there's so many benefits for the environment, for the culture of the world, and also for your own nutrition from eating these little critters. And try different things at home with your own recipes, with whether it's, you know, just using a little bit of the flour because it's a little too much for you to be eating an insect or, you know, literally going and baking them. Hopefully this has given you some inspiration to try something new. Uh, if you want to find out where you can get some of, this, some of these ingredients, check out the description below. Let us know any recipes or ideas you may have for making insects, because clearly we're not that good. These were not very tasty. <laughs> and we want to see you eating insects, so let us know on Instagram, Twitter, or Vine. And, of course, subscribe to ASAP Thought. We are going to go eat a thousand cookies. Oh! <laughs> 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 <laughs>